Hey, what's up guys? This is Jonas Blue and make sure you check out my exclusive media. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's up everybody, Joe Tumble here for Waking Life Media. I'm sat here with a very, very special guest. You guys might know him from his crazy music videos and all these amazing songs like Perfect Strangers. Jonas Blue. How's it going, man? Good, man. You right? I'm good. I'm How's, good. how are you finding South Africa? Yeah, it's good. I only got here a few hours ago, but it's yeah. been, been fun. Yeah, so, so we, we wanted to do something special today. We just wanted to um, have a nice with Jonas, you know, play, play a little FIFA. But he, then he told me that you know he's not really into it. So I'm gonna play and then I'm gonna ask him a few questions. Yeah, I'm gonna and, watch you play. And then you guys are gonna have a night. So hopefully Jonas will be on my side. I mean, if I lose, I hope he's gonna cheer me on and give me a hug later. I've, I've only got to be on the winner's side. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how we do it. All right, let's do this. Um, so I'm gonna avenge myself because I'm a Man United fan and we lost to Manchester City. So um, I'm gonna do this thing where I'm gonna try and beat the living daylights out of them. Wow, it looks that real. It looks crazy real. It looks crazy wow. real. So. Jonas, before you, you were Jonas Blue, you were Guy James Robin. That's correct, yeah. All right. And, um, you know, a lot of a lot of artists change change their names for the purposes of, of performing. Mm. You know, why did you change yours? Like, like why, why not just use the name Guy James Robin? Uh, because I had been signed to various labels. Yeah. Uh, and I'd done a lot of work under my name, Guy Robin. Yeah. I, I then actually had a different name called Scales. Yeah. And then I finally found my purpose in music when um, I got to Jonas Blue. Yeah. So uh, it was just, yeah, the fast car at the time so I didn't, like nothing else that I was making so I just wanted to create something fresh and a new artist name and uh, yeah, it really, uh, really stuck. I read an interesting story about you. So so I read that when you were young, like you had this calling, like, like you had friends that were like rapping and like they're doing garage music and then yeah. you just got addicted and you were like you went to your dad and you were like I want to do music for the rest of my life and you got your turntable yeah and that's where the love for music was born yeah right? pretty much I mean from from a really young age from seven eight years old I became a musician um, and then at the age of 11 I got my first pair of decks and yeah and that was it for me I, I, I knew that that was everything and yeah anything that I wanted to do and uh, a year into that, I got into production, and um, that was when I knew that I, I was doing nothing else. You know, a lot of kids don't don't have that that um, belief in themselves enough to just be like, okay, I want to do music, and then go to their parents. I mean, like a lot of parents still in 2017 still believe yeah. they still only one path: school, you know, like uni, job. You'll be nice. Mm. You know, what made yeah. like, what gave you that courage to tell your dad, like, listen, dad, I'm doing this for life. Oh, I mean, they had no other option. <laughs> that was all I was doing. Yeah. I'm quite stubborn, so when I kind of you know I want to do something, I, uh, I do it. So yeah. uh, that was pretty much it. It was I just told them that this is what I'm doing. That's it, really. Yeah, so a lot of artists today, they, they, like the nature of music now is like you make a song and you can blow up real fast. Mm. You know, we've seen it like with the likes of, say, for example, Lil Uzi Vert, right, where a lot of people didn't know him and stuff. But like one thing I've also known, especially like because I follow Gary Vaynerchuk, he says it takes at least 10 years to be an overnight like success. Was it the same for you, or did or did you also be able to make that one song that gave that put you on the map? Uh, I mean, Fast Car definitely put me on the map, yeah. but it's it's not about having one hit. It's, yeah. a, it's about having five, ten, fifteen, yes. twenty hits. Yes. So the the first hit's good, but then the pressure's on because you need to keep delivering yeah. that same amount of. Uh, global success that you had on the first one so yeah um, I've been yeah like I said I've been making music since I was 11 12 years old and yeah. I'm 28 now so um, I actually did fast car when I was 26 yeah uh, I've been doing it a long time so definitely wasn't overnight for me and uh, um, yeah it's just about keeping on now okay 
didn't sign it. All right. Well, you, you know, like when I speak to a lot of artists, a lot of them tell me that, um, you know, like what matters to them is that if they, if, if no one was listening, they would still make the music and that's what keeps them going. You know, how, how important is it like for you to actually have people that are listening at the end of the day? Um, I think for me, yeah, it's super important. Um, and um, it's, it's super important and it just keeps me driving on, you know, I just want to, I want to hear people sing those songs back yeah. to me at gigs and yeah. that's what, I, I make music in a very different way now, you know, it's, a lot of it's inspired from me playing at gigs and, yeah. and travelling the world, so um, it's very different to how I used to make music where I was just sitting in a room imagining that I was in these places, yeah. I'm actually there now and yeah. getting the inspiration first hand, so um, yeah. yeah. You just called against me, man. I can't believe how real this is. This is scary. <laughs> you know, you actually just told me that, that you don't play video games in your downtime. So what is it that Jonas Blue does in his downtime to, you know, relax and just... I have no downtime. Seriously? I have no downtime. Like none whatsoever? None. Uh, okay, so my, if you did have down... downtime, what would you choose to do? Oh, I'd be in the gym. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the gym is my thing, but I don't have time for that anymore either. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I'd be doing in my downtime. All uh, right, you've... you've um, Put out three official music videos, right? With, yeah. Like by your side, mm. actually um, having the least amount of views. Yeah. And yet it still has 65 million views, right? 65 million is a lot. Um, in the in the African market, uh, it's it would be like a miracle to even reach 50, right? So when you see that, right, how mad is it that 65 million views is considered little in today's day and age? Mm. And then you know, I mean, like Adal and them have smashed the one billion mark. Mm. You know, so so how how important are views these days? Um, they're, they're super important, especially for the, the way I've come into music. I came from the streaming culture, so yeah. um, those numbers are definitely important, and um, we're always monitoring them. And weirdly, by your side was actually, although it was kind of the least viewed video yeah. it's, it's the biggest song in Asia yeah. for me out of all the songs okay so although they might ha not have views they might have connected in certain places that mm. you, you didn't think they did so um, yeah it's uh, it's still amazing to have achieved what was it 60? 65 mil 65 mil so. 65 mil do you do you ever check your views or do you like I do but it's like when we move on to like the next singles I kind of move on with it yeah I don't kind of keep checking the old ones yeah um, but I mean we hit 3 billion streams overall on all my yeah. on all my music so that was definitely a big milestone this year for, for streaming yeah. purposes and when you choose an artist to work with you know um, like what do you look for or is it like usually you know, someone that you're feeling like here's his own personal music, and you're like, listen, I got a beat for you. I got, I got something that I made in the studio. Come through and sing on this, or does it have to have a personal connection with the artist? Um, not necessarily. No, uh, the, the personal connection is is with me and the record. Um, but um, with the artists that I find to sing sing the songs, is that good? Yeah. You? Okay, yeah. Cool. I just scored it. Okay, great. Yeah. And I'm, Doing a crazy celebration. Cool. <laughs> Wait, oh, I missed. I missed your celebration. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just try to look for new talent um, and talent that has a personality to their sound. Okay. Um, and each of the guys that I've got on my record so far definitely do have that. Um, so that's generally what I'm looking for. Yeah. And 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 I know you've only been in South Africa for a few hours. Although you've been here before, um, are there any artists from South Africa that you've seen that that might be of, of interest to you? I mean, Black Coffee is the the epitome, right? Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. guy's just the level. Yeah, it's just intense. How good he is right now. Mm. When yeah. I when I started out under my real name, Guy Robin, I was actually I made some kind of very early South African house music. Yeah, very early on, and uh, yeah, he was definitely aware of that for sure. Okay, mm. all right. So now I'm gonna ask you a few questions, right? Because I know you made that song like for strangers, and one of the lyrics is maybe we don't need a reason why. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you questions and you're, and you're just gonna say, there's a reason for that and there's, or there's absolutely no reason for that, okay? okay? So the first one is pineapple on pizza. Is there a reason for that? No. Or should we, no? No. Are you serious? Do you know how much I love pineapple on pizza? Really? Why? Like, because I mean, it's healthy. No, not, not really, it's not really. Not really. No. <laughs> All right, uh, the next one, football teams. 
Do you see no reason for football teams at all? I, I see the reason, but I mean, it's it not really for me. Okay, but the thing is, like, you're you're legit from the UK, and it's football crazy country over there. Yeah. Right. So how come the football crazy bug did not bite you? Um, just because it. I was never brought up with football. My, my family was never into football. Mm. Um, and then I just caught the music bug and music took up all my time. Okay. Football takes up a lot of time. It does. The next one is white shoes with a black suit. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh as in white trainers or, or shoes? <laughs> no, like shoes. Like oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. Uh, but you'd wear, wear trainers with yeah. a black suit? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'd rock like... I'd go for these definitely with a suit for sure. Okay, and the and the final one, um, I don't know if how you're gonna respond to this one, but like Donald Trump, do we need a reason for that guy? Or absolutely not. Uh, I mean, that's I'm just gonna stay out of that. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not getting. I'm not getting involved with America's politics. All right, all right. So my my last two questions left for you are: so like we live um, in a world where where everything is digital. You know, um, a lot of a lot of record sales are now are now being done um, through through streaming platforms. You know, Tidal, uh, Apple Music, etc., etc., etc. Do you think that that you know CDs and discs will will ever be able to make a comeback, or are we done with that completely as as a, a generation? Well, in in places like um, Germany and Asia, the CD format mm. is still huge. Yeah. And they're still selling yeah. massive amounts of units of CDs. Yeah. Um, I think that's if you're like the traditional singy type artist, like a Sam Smith or an Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Uh, I obviously come from the more electronic dance side, um, and um, although I'm pop as well, it's um, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, in those countries, it's still a big thing for yeah. sure. Um, but I would say vinyl is actually. Come back. Yeah. I actually want to ask you about about Ed Sheeran and Adele. And I mean, like you're from England. Like, what is it about England English artists that that makes you guys so great? I mean, Ed Sheeran is actually one of my favorite artists. I was actually listening to one of his songs today. You know. So what is it about England in general that gives you guys that 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 something that takes you far? I mean, like if it's not um, in grime or you know UK rap such as Captain Stormzy, it's Adele and and Ed Sheeran killing. And now it's you with EDM. You know. Mm. So. What is it about England and what is it in the English market that is making you guys soar the way you guys are right now? I think we just look for great songs, songs that um, I think obviously being a, a, a natively English speaking country just kind of you know what you want to hear in a, in a song. Maybe it might be different if you're from South Africa trying to create an, an English speaking song. It might be, you might have a different perspective on it but yeah. um, I think just our background in music, and I think being English is, is a bit of a thing as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's just our background in music. You know, having people like the Beatles, and um, it's really just a, a long history of, of, of legends that have come from from the UK. And yeah. the thing with the UK is, there's a lot of people that make music yeah. in the UK, and yeah. we're so kind of we're so kind of finicky about who we let through. Um, that for sure, you know, labels are definitely. They don't just sign anyone. It's yeah. not like if you've got a bit of talent, that's not really enough. You need to be this kind of worldwide global star. That yeah. They see, so um, I think we make it in the UK a lot harder for artists to break through. But when we do, it's like a big thing. Yeah. Um, but I think just you know the background of the music that we have and, and the songs that we make. But yes. Yeah. yeah. And, my, and my last question is: um, a lot of you know young people obviously look up to you. A lot of young people obviously um, find find solace in your music. You know, I mean, like you're about to play at a festival tomorrow, and there's gonna be a lot of young people there. Yeah. You know, banging to your tunes and stuff. Um, what kind of advice would you give, like someone who's trying to follow their dreams and might not really have that that thing that's really you know pushing them, or might be because of circumstance? What kind of advice like, would you give them to make sure that their dreams like like follow through? Well, I always have the same advice, which is. Um, Never be in, I mean, music especially, never be in it for the money. Always be in it for the love and passion of making music. Because the problem is, if you're in it for money, one, you'll get bored very, very quickly of the yeah. music that you're making. Yeah. And two, there's no longevity in it. So yeah. being be in whatever um, kind of thing you want to do as a, as a passion mm. and, and a love for it. And it would just, eventually things will click and 
money will come in eventually, but just you know, make sure you're in it for the right reasons. And if you're not, then you know, make sure that you're, you're kind of pursuing something in life that you really want to do. All right, great. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Um, how, did, how did you find the game there? Like, did um, I do all right? I, I did no I suck? I I have no idea what happened, but I, I see it's 1-1, one, one, so yeah. I guess you did okay. Uh, I mean, I could have done better if I had a teammate, but... Yeah, well, I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, this has been Joe Tumble for Waking Life Media. This is Jonas Blue, and see you guys next time.